Hello everybody, happy Monday and welcome to the Command Valley. My name is Griffin and you're joining us for another Deck Tech. Today we're going to be talking about Gigantha the Wellspring and our 5 color goodness commander deck. Before I begin this episode, I just wanted to remind you guys that if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to this channel. It's a quick and easy way to support us and we really appreciate it. Also, like this video and remember to leave a comment afterwards of what, what you think about this deck tech. And then secondly, we wanted to thank our sponsor, GameGrid Lehigh. If you are in the Utah County area, please check their store out. They have an amazing staff, an awesome card selection, tons of deck boxes, deck sleeves, and board games. We super appreciate them and their support, and we hope you check them out. Alright, let's go ahead and jump into it. Gigantha the Wellspring is a legendary creature companion that came out in Ikoria, but we're using him as the commander for this deck, so we're just going to ignore the companion mechanic. He is 4 Gruel Hybrid for a 5-5 legendary creature elemental elk with companion. He has an activated ability, tap it, and add Wooburg, white, blue, black, green, red, this mana can't be spent to pay generic mana costs. So the goal of this deck is simply to just cast a lot of spells, especially spells that have a lot of different colors in their mana cost so we can get the most out of Gigantha that we can. We also have ways in this deck of untapping Gigantha to use him multiple times per turn so we can cast a lot of our big multiple pip spells and take over the board with all sorts of creatures and spells with colored mana costs. So I split this deck up into four different sections that I wanted to talk about. Four sections that I think are very important. The first one is obviously ramp. Because we are playing a five color deck, I want to make sure that even though we have Gigantha, we have access to the five different colors of mana to be able to cast their spells even without him. And because some of the best ramp is in green, the land in this deck and the mana ramp in this deck is mostly green. So when you look at the deck list, there's gonna be a lot more green mana sources and that's totally okay, that's what we want. So our mana ramp creatures, we have Elysian Caryatid, 1 on a green for a 1-1 creature plant. Tap it, add 1 mana of any color. If you control a creature with power 4 or greater, add 2 mana of any one color instead. Paradise Druid, for 1 on a green, we have a 2-1 creature elf druid. Has hexproof as long as it's untapped, and you can tap it to add 1 mana of any color. Dryad of Elysian Grove, for 2 and a green, we have a 2-4 enchantment creature nymph. You may play an additional land on each of your turns, and lands you control are every basic land type in addition to their other types. Super wonderful in this deck. We really want to be able to have these kind of effects out that make sure that we can always guarantee Wooburg in our mana. Faeborough Elder, for 1 green, white, we have a 0-0 creature Treefolk Druid. With Vigilance, it gets plus 1 plus 1 for each color among permanents you control and you can tap it for each color among permanents you control, add one mana of that color. Don't be surprised if you're gonna be able to tap for Wooburg with Fabro Elder as well, because we have so many different mana costs in our spells. We have Nyx Bloom Ancient, which is four green, green, green for a five, five enchantment creature elemental. With Trample, if you tap a permanent for mana, it produces three times as much of that mana instead. I love Nyx Bloom Ancient in this deck simply because the more spells that we can cast and the more mana that we can make to cast those spells, the better that we're going to be. For the spells, we have Farseek for one and a green. We have a Sorcery Searcher Library for a Plains, Island, Swamp, or Mountain card and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Cultivate for two and a green. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal those cards and put one into the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand. We also have Kodama's Reach that does the same thing. Circuitous Root for 3 and a green, we have a Sorcery, search your library for up to 2 basic lands and or gate cards, put them onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. I really like Circuitous Root, especially in multiple colored decks, because I tend to have a lot of guild gates, and it's really nice to be able to fetch those out with Circuitous Root. Artifacts, we have Soul Ring for 1 mana, we have an artifact, tap it to add 2 colorless to your mana pool. Arcane Signet for 2 generic, we have an artifact, tap it, add 1 mana of any color in your commander's color identity. And then in this deck I've put Demir Signet, Gruul Signet, Mrakto Signet, and Celestia Signet. These are the 4 that I've decided to go best into this deck. You might find a better mix of the guild gates, so feel free to change in any that you like. But the most important thing is that we want to make sure that we have green sources. So the more green sources that we have to be able to use our ramp spells to get the other lands, the happier that will be. We also have Chromatic Lantern, which is three generic for an artifact. Lands you control have tap, add one mana of any color, can also tap to add one mana of any color. So just like the Dryad of Elysian Grove, we want those effects that allow us to tap for any mana. So we'll never worry about tapping our lands wrong or not having the mana that we need. 
All right, so let's move on to the second section in this deck. And the, the name of this step is redundancy. And we have two things in this deck that do this redundancy. The first one is having untapped shenanigans to untap Gigantha so that we can tap him again to get more mana to pay for our spells. Now again, with Gigantha, you cannot pay generic mana cost. You have to use it to either pay the pips in an ability or the pips in the spell's cost itself. But we have untapped shenanigans in this deck so that we can use the most that we can to play as many spells as we can. So we have Cure as Follower, which is a green and a blue for a creature merfolk that untaps another target permanent. Vizier of Tumbling Sands, that's also a creature that can untap another permanent. Then we have Thousand Year Elixir, which is an artifact for three. You may activate abilities of creatures you control as though those creatures had haste. You can also, for one generic, tap it, untap another target creature. Then we also have an enchantment freed from the real. For two and a blue, we have an enchantment aura. Enchant creature for blue, tap enchanted creature, and blue untap enchanted creature. So because this is not a generic mana cost and it does require blue, we can tap Gigantha, add Wooberg to our mana pool, use the blue to untap it with Freed from the Real, and just do it again. Again, this doesn't count as infinite mana because we can only use this for non-generic mana costs. Then we have Intruder Alarm, which is an enchantment for two and a blue. Creatures don't untap during their controller's untap step. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, untap all creatures. So you can tap Gigantha, use Wooberg to cast a spell, if it's a creature, you can untap Gigantha and then do it again. Then the second part of redundancy is other effects that allow us to just play our spells for Wooberg. And in this, we've got Jota, Orcmage Eternal. For one blue, red, white, we have a 4 3 legendary creature, Human Wizard. With flying, you may pay Wooberg rather than pay the mana cost for spells that you cast. We also have Fist of Suns that has the same reading except it's an artifact for three mana. Both of these just go super well with Gigantha. If we have both of these out at the same time and untap shenanigans, we can cast multiple spells per turn. All right, so let's talk about the real exciting part of this deck, the five color hot stuff. A lot of the cards in this deck have three to five pips in their mana cost, and a lot of the time they don't even have a generic mana cost, so we can just use Gigantha to pay for them. However, we do have some generic mana costs that we can use our mana to help pay for. So first up, we've got Animar, Soul of Elements for green, blue, red. We have a legendary creature, Elemental, with pro, white, and black. And whenever you cast a creature spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on Animar. And creature spells you cast cost one generic list for each plus one, plus one counter on Animar. We have Kineos and Tiro of Miletus for red, green, white, blue. We have a 2-8 legendary creature, Human Soldier. At the beginning of your end step, draw a card. Each player may put a land card from their hand onto the battlefield, then each opponent who didn't draws a card. We have Nicol Bolas the Ravenger for one blue, black, red. We have a 4-4 flying legendary creature, Dragon Elder. When Nicol Bolas the Ravenger enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. And for four blue, black, red, exile Nicol Bolas the Ravenger, then return him to the battlefield transformed under his owner's control. Activate this ability only any time you can cast a sorcery. Then he turns into a legendary planeswalker with seven loyalty counters. Plus two, draw two cards. Minus three, Nicol Bolas the Arisen deals 10 damage to target creature or planeswalker. Minus four, put target creature or planeswalker card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. And then for minus 12, exile all but the bottom card of target player's library. We have Yidris, Maelstrom Wielder. For blue, black, red, green, we have a 5-4 legendary creature, Ogre Wizard with Trample. When it deals combat damage to a player, the spells that you cast that turn have Cascade. Chromanticore for Wooberg, we have a 4-4 enchantment creature, Manticore with also Bestow for two in Wooberg. He has Flying, First Strike, Vigilance, Trample, and Lifelink. And when you enchant him onto a creature, the enchanted creature gets plus four, plus four, has Flying, First Strike, Vigilance, Trample, and Lifelink. Golos, Tireless Pilgrim, for five generic, we have a three, five legendary artifact creature, Scout. When he enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a land card, put that card onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. For two generic in Wooberg, exile the top three cards of your library. You may play them this turn without paying their mana cost. So just a reminder, with Gigantha out, we can tap Gigantha for Wooberg and pay that Wooberg cost for Golos activated ability. We just can't use Gigantha's mana to pay for the, the two generic in that activated ability. Maelstrom Archangel for Wooberg. We have a 5-5 creature angel with flying. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may play a non-land card from your hand without paying its mana cost. We have Nethroi, Apex of Death. For two, white, black, green, we have a 5-5 legendary creature, Cat Nightmare Beast. And it can mutate for four, green, white, hybrid, black, black. It's got Death Touch and Lifelink, and when it mutates, return any number of target creature cards with total power, 10 or less, from your graveyard to the battlefield. 
Rien, Angel of Rebirth. For two, red, green, white. We have a 5-4 legendary creature, Angel with Flying. Other multicolored creatures you control get plus one plus zero. And whenever another multicolored creature you control dies, return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. A real all-star in this deck because all of our creatures are multicolored. Intet the Dreamer for three, blue, red, green. We have a 6-6 legendary creature, Dragon with Flying. When it deals combat damage to a player, you may pay two and a blue. If you do, remove the top card of your library from the game face down. You may look at that card as long as it remains removed from the game. You may play that card without paying its mana cost as long as Intet remains in play. We have Mildrotha the Gravetide for three, black, green, blue. We have a 6-6 legendary creature, Elemental Avatar. During each of your turns, you may play up to one permanent card of each permanent type from your graveyard. We have Okagachi, Vengeful Kami for one Wooburg. We have a 6-6 Legendary Creature, Dragon Spirit. With Flying and Trample, when it deals combat damage to a player, if that player attacked you during his or her last turn, exile target non-land permanent that player controls. Teneb the Harvester for three black, green, white. We have a 6-6 Legendary Creature, Dragon. With Flying, whenever Teneb the Harvester deals combat damage to a player, you may pay two and a black. If you do, put target creature card in a graveyard into play under your control. Then I've included four of the five bringers of Dawns. This is essentially a cycle that came out during Fifth Dawn where you can pay Wooburg instead of paying its mana cost. So we have Bringer of the Black Dawn, which again, you can pay Wooburg instead of paying the seven black black. But as Trample, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may pay two life. If you do, search your library for a card, then shuffle your library and put that card on top of it. Bringer of the Blue Dawn, it has Trample. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may draw two cards. Bringer of the Green Dawn, Trample. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a 3-3 Green Beast creature token into play. And then finally, Bringer of the Red Dawn, Trample. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may untap target creature and gain control of it until end of turn. That creature gains hasten until end of turn. And then last in our creatures, we have Progenitus. He is double Wooburg, so two of each color. For a 10-10 legendary creature, Hydra Avatar. He has protection from everything, and if he would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal Progenitus and shuffle it into its owner's library instead. For our non-creature spells, first up we have Lord Windgrace, which is in Planeswalker for two black, red, green. He comes in with five loyalty, his plus two discard a card, then draw a card. If a land card is discarded this way, draw an additional card. Minus 3, return up to 2 target land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. And minus 11, destroy up to 6 target non-land permanents, then create 6 2 2 cat warrior creature tokens with forest walk. We have Eerie Ultimatum for 2 blue, 3 black, and 2 green. We have a sorcery, return any number of permanent cards with different names from your graveyard to the battlefield. Genesis Ultimatum for 2 green, 3 blue, and 2 red. Look at the top 5 cards of your library, put any number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield, and the rest into your hand. Exile Genesis Ultimatum. For Runus Ultimatum for 2 red, 3 white, and 2 black, we have a sorcery, destroy all non-land permanents your opponents control. Dune Blast for 4 white, black, green, we have a sorcery, choose up to 1 target creature, destroy the rest. Conflux for 3 in Wooburg, we have a sorcery. Search your library for a white card, a blue card, a black card, a red card, and a green card. Reveal those cards and put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. This card is absolutely absurd with Jagatha. How would you like to pay 3 generic for a tutor of 5 different cards? That sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Then lastly, we have Maelstrom Nexus. For Wooburg, we have an enchantment. The first spell you play each turn has Cascade. And I just wanted to reiterate, a lot of these cards are personal favorites of mine that I think fit really well into this deck, but there's so many other cards that have multiple colored mana costs that you can slot into this deck. Feel free to take any of the ones out that you don't like and put in the ones that you do like. Honestly, Gigantha is your personal taste on what kind of multicolored cards you want to play. All right, so lastly, I just wanted to talk about the card draw in this deck. Because we have so many ways of creating a lot of mana, we want to make sure that we have a full hand to be able to play as many multicolored spells per turn as we can. So first up, we've got Brainstorm. For one blue, we have a instant. Draw three cards and put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. Factor Fiction. For three and a blue, we have an instant reveal the top five cards of your library. An opponent separates those cards into two piles. Put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. The Great Henge. For seven green green, we have a legendary artifact that costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Tap it, add two green, you gain two life. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on it and draw a card. And lastly, we've got Guardian Project. For three and a green, we have an enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if it doesn't have the same name as another creature you control or a creature card in your graveyard, draw a card. So these are a few ways of the decks of being able to draw cards, make sure that we're filling our hand when we play spells, and just keep the train rolling with Gigantha. 
And that's pretty much it guys. Again, Gigantha is simply just a five color good stuff deck. It is a really good deck for new players or introducing your friends into magic, especially into commander, because it's very easy to play. All we want to do is play Gigantha and play all the spells that we want to do. If you are looking for a deck that is not too complicated, then absolutely check out Gigantha and check out the deck list in the show notes below. I've tried to make it as simple as possible without any tough interactions in the deck but still an absolute blast. Leave me a comment in the comment section if you have any super fun includes that I didn't think about. I would love to know what you guys think, and I really hope that you guys try this deck out for yourself. Once again, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate every single subscriber, and if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button, and we'll add you to our appreciation list. With that, that's all I have for you guys tonight. Peace out, love you guys, and we'll see you next time.